What is atomic manipulation? Let's shift our attention to that. Science Behind Apocalypse So, as some of you already know, I'm not the best guy with sticking to a strict schedule. So first off, I want to get out of the way that from now on, I'll be doing the show whenever it's good to go and I've done it to the best of my ability. It'll still be coming out pretty regularly, don't worry about that. Speaking of the show, I've been getting a ton of suggestions lately that may seem all different, but they pretty closely relate. A lot of these suggestions have been relating to Star Wars, Dragon Ball, Avatar, things like that. So I decided this was actually a pretty golden opportunity. Here, let me show you. See, all these concepts relate because they really pull off the same things. I don't really know how else to describe it, but basically, these are all the same superpower. And that superpower is called atomic manipulation. We're going to explore how these individuals pull off atomic manipulation and how it happens in real life. First off, what exactly do I mean by atomic manipulation? Well, basically, it works like this. All elements are made up of atoms, which have neutrons and protons in them. The number of neutrons and protons in an atom define what element that atom is part of. Atom manipulation in real life is when we physically change the number of neutrons and protons inside an atom, therefore changing the element that it makes up into another different element. Again, this is how it works in the real world. It's a very delicate process and I'm sure it's easy to mess up. Remember, this change is not only physical in and of itself, it's done physically. As you probably guessed, there's no known way to do this with only your mind. Or maybe there is. Anyone here heard of William Teller? Probably not, from what I've seen, unless you're in the field, he's a pretty unknown guy. It's a shame, too. His experiments and theories, if true, show some pretty shocking stuff. Basically, the Teller experiments are based on the idea of mind over matter. The big question being, can we as humans manipulate matter using only our mind? His experiments dealt with a concept called residual energy. Residual energy is a term you've probably heard if you've watched shows like Ghost Hunters or The Haunted. If you haven't, let me break it down for you. Although, in those shows, of course, the concept of residual energy deals with the possibility of ghosts and things like that. Not to say that there isn't scientific evidence for and against that, but it's not the exact point that I'm making. Whether we're talking spooky or not, residual energy is defined as energy from an event that persists to exist at the site the event took place at long after the event is over. Basically, think of it like the smell of smoke even after the fire is burned out. So what does residual energy have to do with atomic manipulation? Well, let's see about that. Teller's experiments were conducted like this. A machine was made that could perform a specific action. An example he used was raising pH levels in water. Then, Teller got together a group of people he deducted were of sound mind and, according to him, were exceptionally organized mentally. Then came what he called the process of imprinting. For instance, with the pH machine, one of the people from the group would focus a mental intention of raising pH levels and mentally relate their focus to the machine. The machine itself had no switch or anything like that, but it would still work if activated. It's the activation that Teller was looking for. His theory was that enough mental energy could transmit an intention to the machine and activate it. The machines, after being imprinted, were transported thousands of miles from the original experiment site and brought to a facility where materials relating to their intentions were kept. The pH machine, for example, was brought to a pool of water. People were there to record the levels of pH in the water to see if this theory could hold up. When the original subjects focused on their attention again, the experiment allegedly recorded that the pH levels of the water were raised. This experiment, according to Teller, suggests not only that the human mind does in fact have an effect on the environment around it, but he proposed another theory as to how this could occur. But we'll get to that in a second. We have to take a look back at fictional examples of atomic manipulation and figure out how this and that relate. So let's look at prime examples of atomic manipulation in fictional media. Personally, I think the most relevant example is Apocalypse from X-Men Apocalypse. I'm not only picking this guy because he's the most relevant to the channel theme, it's actually because he displays the most obvious example of atomic manipulation. We'll get to why that is in a moment. The other examples we'll look at are Aang from Avatar and The Last Airbender and Darth Vader from Star Wars. Other examples can be found in things like Dragon Ball and characters from Percy Jackson. 
The reason we're using the three examples that we are is because they encompass each of the types of atomic manipulation that I see in fictional media. What I mean by types is that, well, that's what these examples are. There are types of atomic manipulation found in superpowers, and we've got the list of them right here. Type A atomic manipulation encompasses beings like Apocalypse. Type A is when the atomic manipulation happens very much like our real life example. The atoms of an element are changed so that the element also changes. The difference is, this is done using only the mind instead of the real life physical process. Type B atomic manipulation involves the simple movement of atoms using only the mind. Darth Vader would fit into this category. Type C atomic manipulation is the ability to do both A and B. This category includes Aang, Percy Jackson, possibly Apocalypse, and similar characters. However, a persisting theme in Type C seems to be that individuals retaining the abilities of Type C have restrictions as to what elements and atoms they can manipulate. So, now that we have identified categories of atomic manipulation, let's take a look as to how this could happen in real life. Before we go on, just remember, we're not exploring why, we're exploring how. This brings us right on back to Teller's new theory. After his experiments were allegedly a success, Teller formed a theory based around the idea of what's called energy potential. Teller believed that one way his experiments could have worked was that the mental energy from the people traveled through a sort of invisible chain that linked them to the machine they had previously imprinted. See, although we don't see it and doesn't hurt us, there are vacuums on Earth. And no, I'm not talking about the cleaning vacuums, I'm making a quick little callback for those who watch my video on the Flash's abilities. If you didn't, I'll explain it quickly for you. A vacuum is basically a space where nothing exists. There are no atoms, no molecules, nothing. Space, for example, is a vacuum, that's why you can't breathe or have gravity in space. Vacuums exist on planets, too. They exist as the space between atoms and quarks. Think of the smallest possible space, the smallest amount of it imaginable, and that's probably only a fraction of what it looks like. Teller theorized that while vacuums hold nothing physical, they may hold energy potential. Energy potential is, well, just what it sounds like. It's a space's ability to, at some point, harbor energy, even though when it simply holds potential, that energy does not yet exist in that space. Teller's theory stated that once the machine and the person's energy connected, the residual energy connection was strong enough to be reconnected fully through the energy potential of the vacuum around it. This sounding familiar? Teller unknowingly provided proof for the existence of Bell's Theorem, something I covered in yet another one of my videos. For those who didn't catch that one, Bell's Theorem states that once two energies connect, the objects those energies belong to will always be linked and can reconnect energies. If you couldn't tell by now, this explains atomic manipulation in superpower terms pretty well. Type A, for example, simply uses energy potential to remove or add neutrons and protons to atoms. Type B uses the same method to shift atoms so that the objects they make up move at a chosen speed. And Type C is both methods, although, again, there are a few things about each type that don't quite add up, like restrictions and the forming of energy connections without ever touching the object. However, on the other end, there's enough to go on to say that each of these abilities might just be possible, and heck, while we're here, has anyone realized that we just come up with our own theory on the matter? Pretty cool, right? Speaking of which, just for an added bonus, I think that those superpowers need a more accurate name than atomic manipulation. It's just too general to mean only through use of the mind. I think it should be called the theory of atomic kinesis. Yeah, that'll do nicely.